from? I didn't order a new waifu, did I? the job, but... Oh, never mind, I found something better. This'll definitely take care of that box. Oh, never mind, even better. <laughs> What's the... What up, you weeble wussy? Ah! Finally, it took long enough. What are you doing here, Lacondon? And what's in the other box? Hey, idiot, you mind opening the other one and getting the other idiot out? Wait, what? Uh, ah! God damn it, the cannon! <laughs> Whoops, forgot to put holes. I couldn't breathe! And why did I keep getting bounced around? You're the idiot that didn't want to pay extra for the handle with care option. The hell were you two doing in boxes anyway? Well, how the hell did you think we are going to get here? Why mail yourselves? He's having to deal with Chicago and traffic, right? Plus, I believe we're supposed to be recording that comment review video today. Oh. Yeah. So... What's this about new waifu? What? Uh, no nothing? So, what about the comments? <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's get started. What's going on, guys? It's me, Richard. And I'm Ryan. We are the R and R connection. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait. Um, we can do that, right? We can use that. Just, I know Ray's dead and he doesn't work for Rooster Teeth anymore, but I know Ryan's still alive and he still works there, and he has tendencies of uh, murder. So we can still use this, right? Anyways, guys, here we are again with another comment review. Once again, I want to emphasize. We are not making fun of you. We're just reading through some of the comments because, let's face it, some of you guys have gotten some points and I do want to discuss them and some of you make some jokes that I do want to look at, but some of you do make some, well, you missed the mark. And so I just want to make sure that I correct it. This is the best way I can of interacting with you guys. Before we actually start, I should probably get to pull up the comments myself. Oh, I got the comments right here. Anyway. Once again, I went through some of the comments and I got the top 11. Why 11? Well, it's not because I'm trying to copy from any, uh, nostalgic fanboy or anything like that but uh no i just chose 11 because let's face it there weren't that many comments but there were enough that i did want to look through them and uh nostalgic credit please don't kill me but anyways my association too <laughs> but anyways my friend ryan here is with his, all his lovely stuff he is a true weeaboo i am not i should be flogged for my sins no. he's got he's got the money me i uh I'm lucky if I can keep myself at the end of the night. Regardless of that, let's start with the very first comment, which is not really a comment, it's just something I, I wanted to start the video with. Comments from a guy I think is named P Heart Cutie. I love your name. And he writes, Yay, volume two reviews! No, not joking. Comments, just small comments like that really pick me up. And the ones that are really, really critical, Oh my lord, they're good for a laugh. We got some cats around here, yeah. don't worry about them. Yeah, you might be seeing than... three cats at some point. Oh my god, cats. That should make my video even more popular. <laughs> now getting on to the actual comments, we're going to get on to somebody who's been commenting a lot on my videos. And my word, my man, I have to say, thank you. I really do enjoy your comments, regardless of how much you might bash me, and regardless of how much you may miss the point sometimes. But I do really love your comments. Thomas Gabriel White writes, Nora is not a yandere. She has some qualities of a yandere, like being kind sometimes and violent others, but she doesn't have the psychotic trait that makes yandere's kill anyone who gets close to the one they love. Again, you missed the joke. Yeah. Try and take it away. A lot of people, like in fan fiction, will make her a yandere. They play with that that art, like the, the character traits, as a joke. Yes, it's all a joke. Of course Nora's not a yandere. We, just because we know that she really wants Ren to notice her, but at the same time really doesn't want him. I.e. the song Boo. That's and the whole point of the song. But again, Mr. White, we're not laughing at you. It might have been just because I didn't register that it was a, a joke, but for the most part, yes. Everything in the middle of my review when I'm actually watching it is it's just played for a joke. 
I don't really get to the actual review until the end. Yeah, no matter who you are, a review is always going to be subjective. You can be as objective as you can possibly be, but still, your bias is going to influence it. Yeah. But that doesn't matter. That's why reviews are supposed to be funny. That's why we enjoy them. Okay. But anyways... In theory, anyways. Yes, in theory. Anyways, he continues on by saying... Tuxin, not Tuscan. I apologize. I'm poor with names, and I'm sorry if I didn't say Tuscan right. I know that just pissed you off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be honest... It doesn't matter. He was there for about like four minutes and then death. The whole point he was there for was just to be, oh, death. Emerald and, and Mercury are the bad. Yeah, they're they're the bad guys. <laughs> that and also to set up that wonderful joke that has just existed since yes. day one of yes. versus Blue. But anyways, yes, he continues on with something that is actually I kind of uh, messed up just a little bit, and that is. Actually, Ruby did steal it. She crushed out Weiss's name. And that was, of course, when I made the joke that uh, Ruby slams down the binder and, and Weiss asks, Did you just steal my binder? And of course, I make the joke, Ah, it's not stealing, it's borrowing without yeah. permission. But anyways, he does go on to something else that was sort of in the neutral ground. I'll give you that, man. And that is... Their aura can be transferred to whatever thing they are using as a weapon, which is why the food is so strong. This is explained by Pyrrha in Volume 1, Chapter 6. I don't complain about the physics, unless the show explains the physics in the world is different, like characters having aura, or if it is done for comedy. Technically, you're right, because the, the physics in this world is just slightly different from our own. But, um, I mean, Ryan knows a decent amount about this aura. It's a way to differentiate our world from Ruby. Mm -hmm. Besides... And the, the monsters that yeah. attack being people. But anyways, yes, you did make a very good point. This was done for comedy, but so what are my complaints? It was literally just a joke for the most part. I did, I did, I, I did complain that why did we suddenly have a joke fight in the very beginning? But then again, as I was saying, it's mostly for comedy. One thing I did absolutely love about that fight was the fact that it did establish that these were just kids. Yeah. This is what kids are going to do. Also, it was just the effort that was put into making yeah. that fight. That's dedication for a food yeah. fight. For a food fight. Something that had no value whatsoever except for a comedic appeal. Just for them to have fun. Yeah. Literally, it was them goofing off. This is exactly what Monty does. Exactly, yeah. I mean, it was a great way to start it off. Yeah, like, with Hayboy. He, yeah. he made a separate video where it was just the characters dancing. Here's one again I'll get to you. This is not really a part, but I threw it and I kept it in because why not? In which he, he writes again, The fake pain in your arm is a joke about you saying Yang can survive anything and losing her arm. Good for you. <laughs> you know this the joke. But anyways, he does go on to one that is a very good point that made me just red in the face because I had just completed this episode 12 review. Which is... Casey, not Kasi. I'm sorry, as again, I'm bad with names. I, I swear, I looked her up, and it was C-A-S-S-Y. I don't know when it would change. Maybe Wikipedia got hacked or whatever, but who cares? Well, then again, also with Wikipedia, it's not the most reputable yeah. source. And besides, anybody can it's, it's not them that are taking down my videos. True. It's YouTube. <laughs> Anyways, going on to the next character, we have Chris T75. And my guess is your uh, little avatar for that's pretty much my, your general reaction to my videos. Just deadpan face. Not sure if that was a joke. Makes sense. Because I'm not sure if you got the joke either here. He writes, Sure, they don't explain the hiccups in the show, but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that she hiccups, no pun intended, when she's clearly lying. Which points to her being based on Pinocchio. This is, of course, during uh, a little... Penny lying to Ruby that nothing was wrong, which A, I completely did not know that. I mean, I, I knew that she was based off Poke Pinocchio, but I didn't know that was uh, a hint to that. But B, my point still stands. There was no reason why they needed to have her hiccup and then never really bring it up again. This could be a, a theme for the for these comments you chose. Yes, yes, yes. But we'll get to some good ones because again, we're not laughing at you. It just means that I have to focus on making jokes better. God knows how I'm gonna do that. But the next one comes from Cody Ra, who writes, Those horrible Texans. And good point on the bit of rush past the world building for the robot fight. I mean, this season is by far my least favorite, but hey, we all know where it's going. And while the next season suffers a little bit of the same, I think they got the formula closer to just right there. Sadly, Yang can't seem to follow her. 
have no idea what that last bit means, but I know it has something to do with Yang, and it probably has something to do with Volume 3, we're not going to talk about Volume 3, we're not going to talk about it! Actually, you review it. <laughs> yes. But anyways, thank you for the comment, and yes, it was just a sad part of that, and it, go, it falls down on the writers, not really having any other experience except for this right now. Literally, we're lucky to get Ruby as good as it is. That doesn't excuse their faults, but still, we got a decent fight, and I did say it was decent. I love that fight. It's literally four teenage girls fighting a robot. How cool is that? Just you can't... fighting a mech suit. Seriously! You can't get any more anime than that! Uh, how to describe it, it's like, basically, take a mini Gundam and have four superpowered girls try to beat it. Again, not by throwing missiles or anything, but literally stabbing it. Yes. Or punching it. Yes. A great fight, but sadly they rushed past it. Back again to you, Mr. White! I know you are reviewing each episode as if you haven't seen the show, but do you have to treat each individual episode like it's its own story? This episode had less character development and more action, but there are a lot of episodes with no action and a lot of character development, and some with a balance between the two. Correct! This is again back on the whole episode 4, I believe it was, with the robot fight. Yeah. However, Mr. White, I think you're forgetting one important detail. A good story has three important parts to it. Characters, plot, and world. Characters being the most important, plot coming in second, and world being something that yeah. you can easily fight by on, but isn't to be ignored. However, when it came to this episode, I would have to say, sorry Mr. White, but you can have an episode with absolutely no action, and it can be the most amazing episode ever. And you can have an episode with nothing but action, and people forget about it. Yeah, though, it, there's not like, it's not where there, it's a show where there's a bunch of fighting or anything. It's mainly psychological. Mm -hmm. And yet, it's still an amazing anime. And you want to know why? It's simply because of this. It's like comparing an amazing story to a fireworks display. An amazing story can stick with you. The character development can stick with you long after you're done watching it. However, when it comes to an action scene, it can be incredible to watch. But the moment it's done, it's out of your mind. Back to the, like, the... The food fight, mm -hmm. I can still kind of picture it in my head without having to watch it. Mm -hmm. But again, it, but mainly because of the but, comedy. But again, yeah, there it is. The comedy, it sticks with you. Comedy, which is based on mostly characters. You can't have a good comedic moment without having good characters. If you sacrifice character development, world building, and plot for action, you'll get good action. But it's not going to stick. Yeah, it won't be memorable. That was the problem with Ruby right here. Luckily, they do fix this later on, but we'll get to that. When another. we get to it. Oh, yes. The next comment comes from DT McCab. Close enough. Yeah, the best I can do, my man. The thing about the color names is they have to be a color, mean a color, or make you think of a color. So almost every character in the show fits. Dude, the Kanda, this weed is awesome. I know, right? See, the problem with that, and this is one of the reasons why I actually like Ruby, it's because Monty could have just stuck with the usual, like, anime trope in which that every character's got a particular color to his name, but instead he only made the four characters have names as colors. Red, white, black, yellow. Ruby, Weiss, Blake, and Yang. But everyone else had different names entirely. Unless you know about their backgrounds or know about the characters, you're not going to immediately come up with color. So that was the problem I was having right there. But it, funnily enough, that wasn't a problem with me. That was actually a praise. I admire Monty for having that restraint. My only problem was the fact that it only seemed like some people did this. Which made me wonder, I didn't put it in the video because I didn't want to ruin anything, but I'll get to it later. It made me wonder what kind of connection did their parents have? with each other. Well, I mean, Winter kind of yeah. is somewhat yeah. related to, like, she has some... Yeah, she has a Sunray thing going for Crow. Yeah. Let's, just, let's just admit that. We're gonna get that out of the way. It's Winter. I'm sorry. Okay, you just need to accept your feelings, okay? But anyways, yes, that was the point of it. It was to establish that not everyone had color. If there was a few others that did, then I would have given it that, but it was just like a sort of slip up in writing. Not everybody has a name that is exactly Oh, this, it's this color, but yeah. it has some relation to a color. Although, I also did like their explanation, like Oz's explanation about why they chose that. Alright, going back to Cody Raw. And demonetized. Child warning. And that little skull is now on the feminist watch list. As well as the CPS's watch list. And the FBI's. And the CIA. And the government's secret program to watch out for supervillains. And the local watch department. And these Girl Scouts have been warned. And hell, 
If there's an alien race out there, I'm pretty sure he's on their watch list too. Yeah. My God, I'm I'm very happy for incognito mode because I don't want to know what he looks like. But I loved your comment, Why'd man. Why'd you put that thought in my head? <laughs> Why? <laughs> but I loved your comment, man. Yes, that guy is just my lord. I but needed. By the way, what, I where needed did something. He go. He, he was here earlier. He's currently in the box. Oh yeah, let's not talk about what you look up for research. Have to look on it. All right, moving on to Adrian Alexander. Okay, the amount of strikes you've been getting are just getting annoying. What makes it worse is that all these reviews break none of YouTube's community guidelines. Okay, yes, I wanted to talk about this. Yes, sadly, this is just something I have to deal with. I knew that I was going to have to deal with this from the very beginning. I was very fortunate that most of my trailers did not get flagged at all. I was very fortunate that volume one barely got flagged. I was horribly unfortunate because pretty much everything after volume two, I think like episode four has gotten flagged consistently i actually have to contact rooster teeth about this because it's only gotten worse first it was just like a few minutes to a few hours and i'd have to wait before i can put my video back up to now it's being a few days and that's gotten highly annoying and it's ruining it and especially since now i'm reaching finally 10,000 new views thank you so much guys don't worry i'm not going to try to put ads i'm likely going to start a patreon account because that seems to be a better idea and more viable too. oh yes but anyways yes i do have to contact Rooster Teeth, but funnily enough, this is not Rooster Teeth's fault, and I fully understand that. This is somewhat YouTube's fault, but the main fault lies with you! You guys and you billing in of reaction videos where you just literally sit down, start recording, barely do any editing, if you do any at all. I mean, seriously guys, I'm gonna post two links in the description of this video that I want you guys to check out. One goes, of course, to Jack the One Man Band. He does do re reactions like this, but he does it well. I love his reaction. If you're going to have a reaction, at least be energetic like Noble from Lost Boys. And the second one is going to be from another reaction video that I actually think is a proper reaction video. Because they chop it up a lot and they don't post the entire thing. Yeah. That's the important part, people. That's what makes a proper reaction. Is that you only post those parts that you actually had a reaction to. Exactly. Put some editing in it. If I can make videos, you can make videos. It's only Rooster Teeth's viable option to block out all these so that they can at least make some money off their YouTube. But, uh, okay. Next comment. I love your reviews. I wish more people knew of them. I do have two things I want to mention that you might like to know. One, a few episodes back when Ruby was calling out the team attacks, I heard that Monty named them after the ship's names as a joke. However, Monty had Ruby call out Ice Flower instead of White Rose at the end because he really didn't like the idea of that particular ship. Two, if you look in the background of the scene when Mercury makes that crack about being home by midnight, you can see Penny on the dance floor doing the robot. First of all, thank you so much for the comment. I like it, and I really do appreciate that you do Comments like are always welcome. That you do comment, and I really like it that you do like the video. But also, the first one, I did not know that. Believe it or not, yes, when people started posting that, I did not know that the ships came before this video. The ship's names have been basically in place since volume one. Yeah. I had, I thought about that, but I wasn't sure, so I just said, you know what, it doesn't matter because it's not the fact that she calls out the ships, it's the fact that we should acknowledge them. Most of them. Yeah, you don't acknowledge these people, please. They're freaky already, okay? Don't acknowledge them. But this is one of the things that I wasn't entirely sure, and I'm glad I got some information about it. As for the mention of the second, yes, I actually didn't notice that for two reasons. One, I'm an idiot, and two, mainly because your focus is not actually on Penny. Did you get to see it? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I noticed it in the background. I'm like, no! <laughs> what should have been done, they should have released a test video of that. Because that, I can imagine that getting like all sorts of views. Alright, the next one comes from Zion7. I agree. If it was meant to happen, sure, I'm for it. But I hope they don't make the Bumblebee a thing just because of the crazy fans. That being said, White Rose forever. Oh, put down one, put down one ship and raise up another. Oh, that's how, hey, that's how it's done, man. It's done. But I agree. As I said in my review, and Ryan sort of neutral with this, is that uh, I'm not for the Bumblebee simply because I didn't think it felt right well, towards I mean, the characters. I agree with you. I'm, I'm just... I'm just letting Rooster Teeth do what they yeah. want to do. Yeah, I do agree with Zion a bit that if Rooster Teeth takes the time and effort to fully develop these guys, and more importantly, their relationship, lowly and properly, I will be all on that. So I would love a good relationship built over time. The problem is, is that people were like assuming things, even though they barely had any interactions, and that mainly they were going back to this particular episode, and I love that scene. When I first watched it, I was like, okay, this really develops Yang as someone who she is, a mother. 
she's had to be a mother figure to Ruby, so it makes sense that she would be this sort of person that comes around. But more importantly, she had gone down that road. She had saw what it almost did for her. And yep. she was trying to stop Blake from that happening to her too. So I love how that built like that. As for the Bumblebee ship, again, I wouldn't mind. It's up to the day. As for the uh, White Rose ship, that one's been fun. It's like, uh, I think I showed you that picture, like, where it was like somebody posted something. It's like, <laughs> official, official story. Both. And then somebody else was like, both sink ships. If I, can, if I can find the picture, I'll put it in this uh, review. At the end of the day, we have to do, ex I will say this, we have to accept one thing. Rooster Teeth has full control over their intellectual property. They want to make it so that Weiss falls in love with Zwei. They can do that. She kind of already is. I meant in the bad way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. taking it a little too far. We're not going oh, to that side. We kind of shut up. But uh, anyways, they can do that. But will it make the show better? That's up to them. But going back to Mr. White. Again. Oh, my Lord, man. I, again, you wrote a lot. And here's an interesting one. Senpai means upperclassmen, so that is not the correct word to use. Jean and Pira are both in their first year at Beacon. First of all, yeah, I did not know that. Well, I did not know that senpai technically means upper class. Once again, it's like the word gay. Technically, it means happy. Kind of, Pira is John Senpai because she's got more combat experience than he's ever had. Yeah, than he it's... probably ever will have. But the, my point was, again, this is just a joke. And secondly, my, I wasn't exactly wrong. If you do look it up in the Urban Dictionary, it, because just like the word gay, it is sort yeah, of changed both, some yeah. what of its meaning. It's to not just meaning. not just mean upperclassmen, but to mean somebody who you are deeply in love with. It could be somebody who's older than you, somebody who's younger than you, it could I be somebody the same age. Yonder a simulator. It is somebody you're deeply in love with, but are kind of unwilling to express those feelings directly to them. I.e. Pira. Exactly. But uh, last one. There were several others that I was thinking about, but I didn't want this to be too long. But the last one comes again from Mr. Cody Raw. We hate him, yet he's the only reviewer that isn't This show is, is not anime trash, and should burn in hell. Or this anime is the savior of all. But instead, we have a reviewer who self-destroys as much as I do, and applies an actual give and take for every criticism. Thank you, man. Mainly, this is just encouragement for me, but again, guys, there's nothing sacred with me, there's nothing safe, but I do believe everything should give a chance. And I do like to take both sides of the stories. Again, going back to that whole fight with the robots, that was an amazing fight. It yeah. did push past some of the story a bit, but just because it pushed past the story doesn't mean that it's a bad fight. It just means that it failed in one particular aspect. As for myself, I just try to take both sides of the stories. For the most part, I try to act like I am a new person going to be watching this in order to better establish for you guys how it is for a new person to watch this. And yes, recently it's gotten a bit more accepted as people are starting to create shows that don't follow the usual routine and Ruby would be one of them. Yeah. You would expect certain tropes to pop up. You would expect certain cliches to be. There are some, but... Yeah, but they're played it, down or yeah. they're not emphasized. The thing that is emphasized is the thing that Rooster Teeth has proved itself to be very good at, characters. Exactly. The show is literally named after them. And I will praise to the heavens every time it worked on that. I will criticize it every time it doesn't. But at the end of the day, yeah, it doesn't matter what I say. If you guys love a show, that's great. I'm willing to accept that there are certain aspects about these shows that don't meet the mark. I'm willing to also accept that there are certain things that I do like about it, but it's not that those things overshadow negative things. It's the fact that those- Like a guilty pleasure. It's the fact that those negative things aren't enough for me to drop my enjoyment of the show. That's why you guys watch anime in the first place. Let's face it, a lot of the stuff in there is just unbelievably stupid. Yeah. But we still enjoy it. It's one of the things we love when Ruby decides to have those action scenes. Teenagers fighting robots. How stupid is that? And monsters. One kick and they're dead. Regardless of aura. But we don't care because it's enjoyable. But either way, guys, thank you so much for watching this yeah. comment review. I really hope you enjoyed it. And more importantly, I thank you so much for your comments, guys. It's really amazing every time you write a comment. Even if it's a negative comment, even if you hate me, I don't care. I love reading them. I love taking a look at what you didn't like and trying to see if I can make it more appeasing or try to stick to my guns and focus on something that I am actually good at and build that up so that that one I'm bad at isn't really shown. Because there is a lot of things I'm bad at. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of things that Ruby's bad at. Again, I'm not going to lie. Ruchi doesn't know how to do a plot. Up to they're, this they're day. Work, they're working on it, though. But that's the point. 
They're working on it. Ruby should not exist in the manner that it does, but it does. Ruby is amazing. I'm glad that it exists. I'm glad that you guys exist, and I'm glad that you love Ruby. I love Ruby. I'm still going to review it as much as I can. Again, I'm going to start probably a Patreon soon because I'm going to be able to have my videos monetized, which means that I can start making a little money. I'm going to try to keep them unmonetized because that means you guys can watch them for free, but I will need some incentive from that mainly so that i can show the rooster teeth hey guys look i can't make money as off my videos i need you to allow me to post them immediately but anyways guys i've been richard this is my friend yeah. ryan this is all his lovely stuff we're currently in his house right now yeah and uh well see you guys next time take care bye